I've been waiting for this one for a while. If you're a Penn State football fan, I'm Thomas Frank Carr. Ryan Snyder with me here on our latest breaking news for Penn State football recruiting. Of course, Ryan Snyder is our recruiting insider. Uh, Ryan, we've been doing this a lot lately. So uh, the whole, every, everyone knows the routine. I'm going to set you up and you're going to tell <laughs> us who the next Nittany Lion is. So here we go. If everyone's ready for the roller coaster to start, who is the latest Nittany Lion in the class of 2025? Yeah, Jeff Exner. Penn State finally gets another wide receiver in the class, man. They've they've been working hard uh, to to get as many uh nets in the water, I guess you'd say. I mean, how many hosted I mean, how many guys did they host? 10, 11, 12, something like that. Uh, wide receivers over the last month. Uh but this was one that we've thought for a long time that that Penn State should land and and they end up doing that. So, uh, it's about just just under 6 to 215. Uh so really good size as far as uh, Jeff Exner goes. And man, a couple things that stand out about Jeff, like I go back to that Under Armour camp in May and I, I see him up close and I'm like, man, Jeff is getting big. Like he looks like yeah. a linebacker out there and, uh, you know, did fine during positional drills, all that good stuff uh, was good during uh, one on ones and all that. But it, we didn't get the testing numbers on Jeff until after uh, the camp. And boy, it, it was pretty impressive for a guy his size. Uh, the four six forty, uh, I think, is really actually pretty damn good for for a player at, at just under um 62 215 like I said and but really I think that the big thing with Jeff that that stood out was his explosion numbers uh being able to go over 10 feet in the broad a, a, nearly a 34 inch vertical again you know for a player that <laughs> has the build of those a linebacker are some those a are some ways. great numbers yeah mm-hmm yeah, so uh, and you really saw his explosion. I thought uh, during one on ones and different things. I mean, he was able to really um, break away from guys uh, and anyone that was really kind of playing man coverage up on close uh, up close to him. Uh, man, he he was able to get separation pretty quickly. So uh, that that was the big takeaway for me. I knew Jeff. I, I knew he was explosive. I knew he had some some athletic traits that for his size, uh, a lot of guys don't bring, but. But really seeing, you know, his his ability to separate, you know, at the line of scrimmage uh, was was the big thing that stood out to me. So Penn State gets their second wide receiver in their class. Of course, they're going to keep pushing for many more. But uh, another four star prospect in the industry rankings and, uh, you know, on three has him right now as a high three star. And again, you know, we'll come back to those testing numbers and that performance at yep. Under Armour, which, by the way, I mean, that was the first time I think we've gotten any real testing numbers on Jeff. And, uh, you know, he's another guy now that kind of fits that category of. I'm really curious to see what our what our scouting uh, staff does here because yeah. now that we have those testing numbers, um, I think it stacks up better than the 75th ranked wide receiver in the country. Yeah, and I wanted to put this up. We have our graphic that gives you the rankings of where on three has him and where the industry ranking, but this is the full context here of 247 and ESPN both have him as a four-star receiver. So the composite ranking, as you can see, nets out to a four-star with all that information. And as Ryan said, um, you know, some – shuffling is going to happen no matter what mm -hmm. up or down with these players in the class of 2025 so the information we present to you now is where they are but it is a journey not a destination when we talk about these until we get to december and and all of the final final rankings for the class of 2025 um did that uh did that under armor camp change your opinion of where jeff stood from a prospect ranking in the 11 or 12 guys they brought in uh this spring or this spring and summer during the official visit season. um so i want to clarify one thing real quick before we get to that um you'll see with 24 7 and espn like if you look at the at his own three profile we have him listed as a wide receiver and you see 10 uh next to 24 7 and 13 next to espn they have him rated as an athlete so i just want to clarify that because if you look okay. at the rate you look at the positional ratings uh <laughs> or three has him at 75 and then you see 10 next to uh 24 7 you're like that's that's a massive discrepancy but again it's because they haven't rated as an athlete so just wanted to clarify that um you know moving forward but you know, as far as where he stood as far as like the the 10 11 12 guys who visited um no i always knew he was an absolute priority for penn state so i think the under armor camp uh was able to what's the best way to put it I, I I came into that camp not knowing how I thought how good of an athlete he is. I knew obviously we knew he was a great athlete, right? But yeah, getting there's testing numbers for the types first of time. athleticism, right? So that's mm -hmm. what we'll get into when we get into his film breakdown. Is like there are different types of athleticism, and when you, when you bring the size that he does, but then the conversation becomes the movement skills with that size. Do they do they jive? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So, and that was the big thing was just like, oh, okay, you know, he is as advertised or, or as Penn State has always kind of thought he was as far as, you know, a, a really excellent athlete for his size and and a player that can absolutely play at wide receiver. Cause man, I've ever seen him as a freshman. I thought he'd be a linebacker or even defensive end. I talked to people about, and you know, obviously that was what 2021. So that was a long time ago. Um, but, uh, but yeah, he certainly filled out as far as a wide receiver goes. And I think from a physical perspective uh, could be maybe a guy that it, could see the field uh, potentially in, in a year or two just because of how well built he is and then obviously wide yeah. receiver corner you know those positions are are spots where you do see guys make impact so long way to go with that I don't want to overthink it too much but as far as like Penn State's board and where he ranked we always knew he was up there Lex was up there you know obviously Quincy Porter goes on to Ohio State a couple other guys that uh, were really high that have gone since have since gone elsewhere but but Jeff was always uh, a top five wide receiver for them um, pretty much for throughout the last year so let's talk about the relationship with Penn State then. Of course, a McDonough player going to Penn State is not a surprise, but let, uh, what was the um, what's the story there with what it came down to? I know Maryland was part of the conversation here. So how did all of this shake out with the relationship with Penn State and then the final decision? Yeah, we've talked about the size to Kenny Sanders a good bit. I think anyone who kind of follows us closely watches these uh, videos and our YouTube pods. Um, you know they they know uh, that that relationship well. I mean, just to clarify, he uh, Kenny grew up with with Jeff's late uncle uh, at McDonough, and, and and really he's had family ties uh, to Kenny Sanders. Or Fred, Kenny's not related to him or anything like that, but Kenny's been very close with the Exner family for a long, long time. Um, so I think that's a big reason why uh, Penn State offered him as a eighth grader. Uh, he offered him in April 2021, and he didn't he didn't play any varsity football until obviously a couple months later, uh, once once the season got rolling. So I think that played a big part in Penn State getting a foot in the door early. Uh, then they were able to get him on for a couple visits before a lot of other top programs even offered. And you know those things. Sometimes they matter, sometimes they don't. In this case, I do think that was a, a big part of it. And Penn State was always, of course, very consistent, you know, as you would expect for a player from McDonough, a top prospect from Maryland, all that good stuff. So I think that was the big thing that kind of helped Penn State. Uh, Virginia Tech hosted him for an OV in April. Maryland just hosted him for an official visit this past weekend. And, you know, there was certainly a good bit of talk that, uh, you know, Maryland was giving him something to think about. I think he has close relationships with a lot of guys within that, within that Maryland, Baltimore region. And, uh, you know, a lot of those guys are probably going to end up uh, with the Terps. So I think that was a, a part of it. But at the end of the day, you know, the consistency from Penn State and, and the ties with Higgins and the recruiting staff and so many others, I think that's really kind of what what got this done in the end. And, um, you know, Penn State's really happy to have them because they're, they're getting a guy who's just incredibly consistent. I mean, he makes so many yeah. big plays as far as uh, like in big moments, too. That's the other thing that, you know, his coach has really always stressed to me is like when they need a play. They go to him and, you know, he makes it more often than not. The other thing, too, another stat that kind of stands out. First off, he's had like 1,700 yards the last year, uh, last two seasons, you know, 20 plus touchdowns. Like all those stats stack up. But another thing I really like is I think he's had, you know, 130, 140 some touches over the last couple of years. He's only fumbled the ball one time, which I think kind of speaks to his strength and, you know, his, uh, you know, the way he's able to use his body over so many guys. Um, And it's it's that's important, man. You don't want to be turning the ball over. He and to get into looking at the film here, I, it's been interesting watching this. I know I've talked a lot about what is a Marcus Hagan's receiver recruit look like, and they're good football players. First and foremost, you want to have all of the tangible skills. But when when you boil it down, what I've seen, physicality, size, the ability to box out, jump, high point the football. It's all here with Jeff Exner. This is a guy who, as you said, a four six athlete who can improve in that area. Uh, I, I think that this is a great fit. And one of the one of the first like Marcus Hagan's recruits that looks like a Marcus Hagan's recruit in my own mind and whether or not that's an accurate portrayal or not. I do think that the, those items and the, the, those tangible things stand out from tackle breaking the ability to produce in a lot of different situations, I think, is what it comes down to. Not necessarily specific skills, but just the versatility. He plays in the slot. He plays outside. A lot of his highlight reel is a lot of red zone stuff. So the, you mentioned uh, not not uh, not fumbling the football. I also think focus at the catch point, things like that are all uh, pretty good. There are some areas he can improve too, which I think is kind of a concern when you have a guy who is six foot two, two fifteen coming into college and you wonder where is the upper end of his development curve. Well, a lot of it is in his route tree. 
you know, specifically understanding how to set up defensive backs, how to create leverage. He does these things well right now for the high school level. But I think those explosive numbers you talked about are going to be very important at the line of scrimmage for him to set up a defensive back and then create separation. If he doesn't have that elite long speed to create it in different areas, you know, in the intermediate, in the short uh, part of his route stem in order to create windows down the field where the quarterback can then throw it in. He gets a step because he's a good receiver as opposed to the overwhelming four, three, which other guys might run, which I, I wouldn't expect he ever gets there, but, being fast enough to then make all of these things work. I think that's well within uh, the parameters, what we talk about when we talk about athletes of, and what the Penn State strength staff can do to develop them from a speed perspective. Uh, because we always talk about the size. We don't necessarily talk about how they get faster, uh, typically in, in college. So a really good high floor athlete, which I think people kind of look as a negative sometimes, but if you want guys to come in and produce, you mentioned this, there is a path for him getting on the field early with a lot of the uh, the things he can do. And then from a mentality perspective, uh, this is a guy who I, I know you and, and Fitz are very high on from the way he approaches the game. What have you learned about that that makes you feel so good? Well, they're all, all the McDonough guys are like that, man. I mean, yeah. this is a program that is very similar to Penn State in the, in the things that they really care about, the things that they stress, and, you know, just the way they go about their business. And, you know, Jeff's always been a very classy individual. He's going to fit Penn State incredibly well, goes about his business always in the in the right way. And, you know, steadily progressing and getting better, too, which you always like to see, um, you know, throughout the year. So I think that's big. Uh, two other things I really want to add real quick, um, or at least one other thing. Like Jeff Exner is also a really good basketball player. I mean, he has Division One basketball offers from a handful of schools throughout the region. You know, obviously – um, you know, there's, there's small ones. I think like the UMBCs, Mount St. Mary's, I want to say maybe Sienna, Radford, those kind of schools. But, um, I think you see that and it, I should give his coach credit. I mean, his coach has really kind of stressed that to me, uh, when, when we've talked over the years, it's like, you really kind of see his basketball IQ and the way he's able to kind of shield defenders and yeah. go and high point balls and stuff like that. Um, when you're watching him run routes and, and making plays. So, uh, just, just, I mean, this is a really good athlete guys. Uh, I think if he was two inches taller, like he would have had a real opportunity to play division one uh, basketball at an even higher level. I mean, he already had, like I said, he already has offers, but uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, this is a player who you know brings a lot of different things to the table and uh, excited to kind of see how he continues to progress. And he's just tall enough to play receiver. And that's, mm -hmm. uh, I think for Penn state, that works out great where he's not too tall. He's not too short. He's right in that uh, sweet spot we've been talking about. So uh, now let's, talk about where we are heading into um, the last stages of this recruiting process where some of these other commitments are coming out. What is your long view of where Jeff Exner sits in the Penn State receiver class and uh, what should Penn State fans be on the lookout for uh, generally as we get into July? Yeah, as we, we've been kind of breaking it down. Uh, when did we do that story? I don't know. I want to say maybe April, April-ish, maybe march -ish was we did a story on just kind of like what is Penn State trying to get? And, you know, they have their tall guy in, in Lyric, right? The guy that can kind of stretch the field and, um, you know, go up and get jump passes. And, and Jeff can do that to some degree too. Uh, now I think they also want to get that slot receiver. Uh, Lex Cyrus, of course, is the one we, we've really kind of had circle for a long time. And then there's a few other players who can play it in, in, in multiple ways, kind of like Jeff. Uh, so let's let's see where things go and, and progress with that. But still feel like uh, four receivers is probably the safer bet, or at least that's kind of what it feels like we're trending towards. Maybe they go five. Well, who knows? Um, you know, if Lex gets on board and, you know, they got a couple other guys like a Samari Reed or Matthew Otten or some other guys that want to get on board, um, you know, they'll, they'll, they would take up to five. But right now I, I see uh, – I see locking down Lex Cyrus kind of feels like the the most important thing right now because there you got three different kinds of receivers, right? Three different ways you can you can use all those guys, and uh, you know then you just kind of stack talent behind them. Subscribe to BlueWhiteIllustrated.com. Code PSU1. Two months for one dollar gets you access to the inside information, so you know about the priorities, you know about the testing number, you know about all this stuff when it happens, when it comes to the premium articles, and it comes to the insider information on the message board. I cannot stress enough how much of the recruiting information is there. You know, we talk about some of the stuff here. We talk about it as they commit. If you want all of the information, that's where you find it. And if you're looking to get more into Penn State football as we get into the 2024 season, subscribe. We've been doing film breakdowns. I've been doing watch-alongs uh, on different aspects of Penn State 
uh, over the last couple of months. Ryan's been giving you all the great recruiting information, uh, and we're at camps, all that great stuff. So subscribe to BlueWhiteIllustrated.com. Ryan, thank you so much for your time. And if you're here on the YouTube channel, subscribe here and uh, hit the notification button so that you know when the next breaking news happens because this receiver dam that we talked about yesterday uh, or earlier this week, I should say, on the Blue White Illustrated live show, it's it's open. We're going to hear more about it. So join us here on the on the YouTube side, and we'll get you all that information when it happens. For Ryan Snyder, I'm Thomas Frank Carr. We'll be back.